Hello everyone and welcome back to another Two Cents Plus video. Today we are diving down into the rabbit hole uh, that is Joel's behavior in The Last of Us 2. And uh, today I'm going to be giving you guys my opinion based on my interpretation. Uh, now that I've played the game, looking at all the context that this game presented, I would like to give you guys my viewpoint on why I do not believe that Joel's actions were unreasonable. Um, you are free to disagree, which I'm sure a lot of people will. I'm not going to attack anybody or get upset or call you any names like a lot of people tend to do uh, in the comment sections of certain YouTubers that I'm not going to mention um, when all you're trying to do is just offer your perspective on this piece of media that, you know, is a work of fiction. But people take this way more seriously than they need to. And uh, some people literally talk trash and, and hate you for not thinking the way that they do. And um, that's not what this video is for. I am presenting my perspective and my, uh, you know, perception on exactly what took place um, uh, based on my experience. And that's all I'm here to offer. So um, if you're here to hear an alternate opinion, then great. Uh, sit back, relax, and uh, listen to what I have to say. If not, if, you, if you're just here to, to call me all kinds of names and say all kinds of fucked up things because I don't agree with you, um, then there's no reason for you to even watch this, or be here for that matter. So don't waste your time, because I'm probably not going to say what you want to hear, and if that's all you want, then there's no reason for you to watch this video. So here's my opinion. This is my breakdown on exactly why I think Joel did what he did and why I'm okay with the decision that was made in the game. So the first argument I'm gonna make is in regards to my observations uh, while exploring Joel's house immediately after he died uh, with Ellie and Dina. Um, exploring his house, if you pay attention and look at what's going on there, uh, Joel has been very busy. They've been living here for a minimum four years now, uh, based on what the flashbacks have shown. And uh, Joel has been a busy boy. He's uh, crafting sculptures, very highly detailed sculptures. He's got tools and stuff laying all over the place. Uh, several guitars that it looks like he's either refurbished or straight up just built by hand. Um, you know, you go in the kitchen, there's his little coffee mug on the table. The dude's living pretty comfortably right now. Um, and the reason that I point this out is because this is a very stark difference uh, from how we were introduced to Joel, or at least how Ellie was introduced to Joel. Um, for example, Joel was in this quarantine zone where it was a very cutthroat, very tense place to live. The military couldn't be trusted. The people around you couldn't be trusted. Even your friends couldn't really be trusted. You never knew who would stab you in the back at any moment. He was a tense, jaded old man who had been through a whole lot of crap at that point and, and was just fed up with humanity uh, in general. So at that point in time, um, his behavior was very different than what is displayed now in this game because the circumstances were very different. Um, what I am seeing, what I believe that we are witnessing, is a, a revert back to the Joel that we met in that very first cutscene with him and his daughter. That's the person I think that we're dealing with right now. A person who is still very capable and can do what needs to be done to defend himself and the people he cares about, but all in all, he's just a good dad who cares about his daughter and just wants to live a happy life. Um, and I think that living in this place for four plus years um, has kind of reverted him back to that. Does that mean that he is not capable? No. Does that mean that he's now an idiot or can't defend himself? No. I'm not saying that he has reverted back to some worthless person who can't do anything. I'm simply saying that he has become basically a normal person again. You know? 
Uh, you can tell by his conversations that he has with Ellie and the way that he acts around her, the way that he interacts with everybody else around him, uh, the way he opened up to Tommy. The, the, the dude literally sung a song. <laughs> he played the guitar and sung a song for Ellie. Like, this, this is not the Joel we knew, you know? Um, <clears throat> and people are seeming to say that you know, uh, he he signed his own death warrant, and that's something he would have never done. He would have been extra cautious of anybody okay? he met uh, out on the road and all that stuff. And I really, I really don't think that that's true, honestly. Based on what I've seen, the context that a lot of the letters in the game provides, and the fact that this dude has picked up these hobbies, these hobbies that that are very time consuming. These aren't uh, the type of things that people. Uh, who are constantly angry, constantly paranoid of everybody and everything around them. This ain't the type of stuff that they pick up to do, you know? Um, it, it's just not the same to me, uh, these two people that we're looking at. So based on some of the letters that I saw or read in uh, The Last of Us 2, um, also based on some of the context and conversations that you heard people make, it is not uncommon for new people to show up in Jackson. As a matter of fact, it's fairly common uh, for new people to show up in Jackson. And one of the most common ways for that to happen is when people are out on patrol, they tend to run into others. Uh, they will bring them back to Jackson for supplies, uh, either to move on to wherever it is they're going or to become assimilated kind of into the community. Um, and it's not unreasonable to assume that because a lot of the longer routes have been taken by the veterans, that being Joel and a lot of the other older people like Tommy, um, it's safe to assume that he has brought a few people back. Now, like I said, it is safe to assume. I don't know that for an absolute fact, but like I said, there seems to be some things in the game that alludes to this, like Tommy's immediate willingness to do so. Um, it, it, that moment and that instinctive reaction makes, leads me to believe that they've done this before. They've, they've run into people outside before and either brought them back for supplies or whatever. Like this ain't really, this doesn't really seem like their first run in. Uh, with with this kind of scenario now a lot of people that I've talked to have pointed to the fact that Joel uh, said his name while he was being surrounded by everybody in the lodge but what they seem to have completely missed is that is not when they were introduced to Abby that moment inside the lodge when they were safe that's not when they were revealed that wasn't the moment that they were figured out the moment that they were figured out was when they barricaded the other ski lodge and because there was like a heat of the moment thing and they needed to work together Tommy blurted out my name's Tommy and this is Joel what's your name because they needed to be able to communicate with each other to survive in the scenario that they were in at that moment and I would even argue before when Abby first laid eyes on Joel she knew exactly who she was dealing with and some people are arguing, you know, um, you know, that's not, uh, he's, he's, he's not the only Joel left in the world, but I mean, come on, uh, if we're going to trust instincts uh, in the way that they typically work, uh, I'm sure she had a general description of what Joel looked like, and I'm sure she knew, you know, what kind of person she was looking for. What are the odds of this Joel not being the one she was looking for? Uh, um, I did hear a lot of people also say that uh, Joel uh, gave his last name willingly and he would have never done that. Never spoke it. Never said it. Not a single time. Neither Joel or Tommy said their last names to these people. She knew his last name already. Uh, go back and watch if you want. Go back and play that part again. It never happened. I don't know where people got this from, but it did not happen. So with all that said, based on the context that the game provides to you by allowing you to walk through his house and see what he's been up to over the years, um, uh, different letters throughout the game that implies that people had been brought back to Jackson on numerous occasions by people who were out on patrol, and just, you know, 
the the general behavior of Joel um, throughout the years that they showed us in the several flashbacks of how he was acting, it, it was fairly obvious to me that he wasn't the same person that he was in the last game. Uh, one one other thing that people were bringing up is the fact that he he was still as cautious as he was before because he was uh he kept telling Ellie to make sure she didn't say anything about the infection and he was very adamant about it that means he's the same dude and I'm like no that means that he wanted to cover his ass because he did not want her talking about or discovering the horrible thing that he did to her because at this point in the game, she still does not know what he did. And, 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 and even to this very moment, he is still looking her right in the face and lying to her about what happened that day. He don't want her to know. So he don't want her to talk about it. And the more she talks about it and the more people know, the more people are going to start asking questions. And the more people are going to start asking questions, the, 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 the greater the chances that she finds out what Joel did. Which is why he had the fucking nerve to get upset with her and try to make it seem like she was rehashing something that she had no business doing. Even though at this point he was still lying to her and it, it was her business. She should have been able to know what he did, but he was still lying to her up until this point. So that was to cover his own ass. That wasn't paranoid. I, I want to make sure that, you know, yada yada. That was that was for him. Because he wanted to still conceal the thing that he did. And on that note, Joel generated a shit ton of karma for what he did that day. You know what I mean? Um, to his credit, he, he thought that the Fireflies were done after that whole scenario. And as a matter of fact, if you pay attention to a lot of things other people say is in the game, a lot of people are convinced that the fireflies are dead like they're they're over with there are no more fireflies this shit is finished um even when you play with abby her friends have pushed forth that same sentiment um so it was pretty safe for joel to assume that they were fine i don't i don't think he was really concerned about you know the fireflies finding her i think he was concerned about the wrong person finding out and asking the right questions and, and, and exposing what he did. Um, that's what I think he was really concerned about. Now what I'm about to say next is probably going to be very controversial and a lot of people are not going to like it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Joe had it coming, dude. He had it coming. Uh, karma was on its way to come and find him after what he did. There was no way for him to know that that doctor had a daughter uh, who, who would come looking for him. He had no idea, but it, it happened. And whether you like it or not, Joel created Abby. Abby, the only reason she was there at that lodge looking for him is because of what he did. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for Joel. So Joel had this karma coming for him. And the fact that he looked Ellie in the face after cultivating the relationship that they did and gaining so much trust with her and straight up lied about what happened and not even included her into that decision there was it was bound that something was going to happen that eventually she was going to find out and shit was going to hit the fan and it did so i personally when joel got killed was just like yeah that's what happens this is what happens there was no way that you could make a decision that monumental and there be no consequences period um and and to be perfectly honest i am of the belief that if the roles were reversed and for some reason that doctor ended up killing Joel but decided not to do the surgery and decided to let her decide or something like that or whatever but he lied to her and didn't tell her that he murdered Joel but she found out later on and she found the doctor got the golf club and killed the doctor in the same way in the same way that Abby killed Joel y'all would be rooting it on you would be excited. You would be pumped like, yeah, she got her revenge. You'd be excited. The only reason that you're upset now is because it was Abby and you don't like Abby. But if it, if the rose was reversed and they held Abby down and it was, it was Ellie beating this doctor to death uh, for killing Joe with the golf club, you'd be all for it. You'd be all for it, 100%. And you'd be glad that she got her revenge. But this ain't the character you wanted to get their revenge, and I get that. So that's fine. We'll talk about that more on the video uh, that 
discuss is the ending because we don't want to get too much into that here. So, based on the context that I provided and the clips that you see in this video that shows the context uh, that I provided, or at least as much as I can actually find, the most important thing really, I think, is Joel's house and looking at the flashbacks and paying attention to his behavior. And also taking into consideration that when he was warning her about, you know, revealing that she was immune, that it wasn't for her, it was for him, uh, you know. Uh, cause we've already established that he's a fucking liar, <laughs> uh, and that he will do anything to conceal said lie, uh, because he had proven that point all the way up until now, except for when he finally revealed it to, to, to Tommy. Because even after she found out, if you guys remember correctly, when she went to the place to figure out exactly what happened, even after she found out for herself, she had to basically tell him, if you lie to me again, we are done forever. Like, he, she had to literally say that for him to finally tell the truth. So he was, he was willing to lie forever as long as she was going to still stay by his side. But once he realized that he could lose her forever, it defeats the purpose of lying anymore. Because that, that was the point. He was lying because he didn't want to lose her. At the end of the day, man, if you're, if you're going to be mad, if you're going to be upset that Ellie, or not Ellie, that uh, Abby exists, and that she has such a presence in this game, then you're gonna have to blame Joel for that. If Joel didn't do what he did, then none of this would have ever happened. But he did. And he started a chain reaction of events that led to several people dying. Um, so I think, uh, I, I'm, I'm not one to really, I'm not, I'm not one for, revenge you know what i mean even even if it's even if it's revenge that i agree with where i'm like you know they deserve to get revenge and uh, i don't feel bad that they did it i'm still of the mind that it always leads to something bad a prime example joel did what he did and created abby abby did what she did and made a very pissed off ellie and what did that do got every single person that she cared about killed so, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's this chain reaction thing. And just like Joel could have not done what he did, Abby could have not did what she did and not caused the chain of events that end up ha ended up happening after that. You know what I mean? Or if she was smart, because if she was smart, she absolutely should have done this. But when she went in to finish the job, to, to, to kill Joel for what he did, she should have also killed Ellie and she should have also killed Tommy. She should have. And and they, they say that in the game. It's like, oh, well, we let you live. And she was like, maybe you shouldn't have done that. And I agree. They should not have let her live. Because um, when it comes to do like revenge and stuff like that, you have to tie up loose ends. And this is the reason why I understand why so many people are really pissed off about the ending of this game. Even though I am generally okay with it, we'll get to that in the next video, but I understand why people are upset because if you're gonna go this far, you gotta go all the way. Like there's no, you're here, we're here now. Like we gotta do this shit. And um, Abby fucked up. And because she fucked up, she lost everything. Now it is, it is still possible that she could have uh, killed Ellie and Tommy and somebody else could have went after her. Um, th that's still very possible, but a lot less likely. Because, uh, to be perfectly honest, I'd much rather have uh, some rando from Jackson come after me than Ellie or Tommy. Because they gave her hell. They literally killed an entire army of people to get to her, including everybody she knows and loved. So, uh, not killing her was a terrible idea uh, on Abby's part. So, we could talk about that more if you like to, too. But I think I, I, think I have set out and, and done what I wanted to do with this video. I have put forth my opinion on why I think that Joel and the situation around his death was reasonable and not ridiculous. Um, but that's just my opinion. That's my interpretation on the way that I played the game because I paid so much attention to everything. I read every freaking letter and I, I thoroughly explored every place that I could, especially Joel's house, and I noticed all the small details. So from my perspective, I think that it all fits. 
based on the context that was given. You could still disagree, and that is 100% fine. Just don't come at me uh, all crazy, because um, it's a video game. It's a work of fiction that somebody else made, and we just experienced it. So I, I really, I'm really not going to put up with uh, personal attacks and all that stupid childish bullshit. Like, I, I just don't even, don't even. Don't waste your time, because I'm not going to respond to you. Just fuck off <laughs> if that's if that's what you're here for. But if you would like to provide counter arguments and and let me know why you think it's either incorrect or why you see it differently, then then by all means, man, I, the, I'm here for the conversation, not here for the uh, hostility. I just don't want to deal with it because it ain't that deep. I didn't make the game, and neither did you. So who cares? It's it's not that big of a deal. Um, but for the people who watched the video, thank you for watching. And uh, if you could do me a favor, if you're going to leave a comment, please, if you're if you're going to leave a comment, put three exclamation points before you type anything. So that way I know you watch the video to the end. Because um, once again, I'm not going to be responding to people who didn't actually listen to my entire viewpoint, um, especially if you have opinions about my viewpoint. If you didn't watch the video, then you don't have any opinions about my viewpoint. You can't because you don't know what it is. So um, if you did watch the video all the way through, three exclamation points, I'm gonna be looking for that specifically so I know who to respond to, um, you know. And if you just read the title and, and didn't watch the video and you're commenting, you're not gonna hear this portion anyway. So uh, I'll know not to respond to you. But if you did make it this far, especially, especially if you disagree with me, thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, it is not easy all the time to listen to opinions and views that are not your own, especially when you disagree with them heavily. Uh, but the fact that you did, I really appreciate. So thank you for watching. I look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comment sections below. And I will see you guys on the next one.